love and betrayal, greed and murder. It's set in this interesting world of contrasting ideologies and what's right and wrong and has a great philosophy about it. Thrones is about power struggles in a fantasy kingdom called Westeros, and it's about the struggle for the, the Iron Throne, which is the seat of power in this kingdom. There's a war coming, Ned. I don't know when, I don't know who we'll be fighting, but it's coming. At the core of it, there, there's a, a conflict for power between two great houses initially, House Stark and House Lannister. The other major houses are all contenders as well. It's a suitably complicated political situation. The old truth that power corrupts, I think, is very valid. And it shows in this series. You see characters that come into power and how they change. In a way, it's about how people forget to see the uh, bigger picture. There's a common threat that everybody kind of ignores because they, they're too busy pursuing their own interests. And meanwhile, outside the Seven Kingdoms, two great threats are rising, one across the sea in the exiled Targaryen siblings, and another one far to the north, beyond the wall, which is the boundary of the Seven Kingdoms, in lands of uh, perpetual ice and cold, where a supernatural threat is stirring. It's very different from anything that's been done. I can't think of another fantasy which is as dark as this one is, which is as gritty and as real. Every single character is incredibly complex. You think you know them, you think you've got them pegged as uh, what they seemingly are, but they really aren't. Is there someone in your service whom you trust completely? Yes. The wiser answer was no, my lord. It's not a good guy's, bad guy's story. It's a story where everybody is pursuing their own interest and everybody is following their own code. And it's about those interests and those ethics coming into conflict with each other. And it just provides a much, a much richer story than the guys in white beating the guys in black. But Baelish, perhaps I was wrong to distrust you. Distrusting me was the wisest thing you've done since you climbed off your horse. It's quite a big, sprawling, epic kind of uh, story and fascinating characters, different characters, very uh, rich, sort of tasty characters in there. You don't know who they all are and how they fit in. Shouldn't be out here, my lord. There's no telling who has eyes where. Let them look. So I, I find it's very dense and it's very multi-layered. I think that's what I find quite intriguing and quite fascinating about this thing. Stark is the uh, center of the series. He's, he's very realistic, quite a pragmatic character. This is fine work. It's not for sale. His lordship wants the helmet. I made it for me. Forgive him, my lord. There's nothing to forgive. He's principled, he has values, and above all, he's very loyal, you know, and, uh, and that's something that he, uh, he demonstrates on, on, on many occasions. You helped me win the Iron Throne, now help me keep the thing. We were meant to rule together. That is the Lord of Winterfell, and he's uh, married to Catelyn Tully. Together they have uh, a number of uh, children. Seventeen years ago, you rode off with Robert Baratheon. You came back a year later with another woman's son. Jon Snow, he's of an age with Rob, the eldest son, and their closest brothers. I would say Jon Snow is a young hero in a lot of ways. Well, Lord Snow, it appears you're the least useless person here. Personally, I think there's a, a hell of a lot of inner turmoil if he's fighting between his ambition to be someone and, and to make a mark on things. I'm ready. You're not going. You're no ranger, Joe. Here. A man gets what he earns. When he earns. His ambition can and does make him do quite extreme things. The Lannisters are the Queen's family. Robert Baratheon, the king, who wed the daughter of another grace house, Cersei Lannister. 
She is the queen of the Seven Kingdoms. She's quite tricky, layered and power mad. She's smart and political. And she has a very hard time trusting anyone. You're just a soldier, aren't you? You take your orders and you carry on. I was also trained to kill my enemies, Your Grace. As was I. There's a definite sense with Cersei that if it will further her game of power, she'll get rid of anybody. It doesn't really matter. Jamie, her twin brother, is one of the members of the Kingsguard. It would be good to have you on the field. The competition has become a bit stale. I don't fight in tournaments, because when I fight a man for real, I don't want him to know what I can do. He is a soldier, and he doesn't care about the politics. He knows the game, and he does not want to be directly involved in it. Cersei and Jaime also have another brother, Tyrion Lannister. Tyrion Lannister, because of his size, has had a very complicated upbringing in relation to his father and his sister. He's very well read. He has zero powers with physical defenses, so he has to defend himself with his uh, wit and charm. Why'd you read so much? Look at me and tell me what you see. Is this a trick? What you see is a dwarf. My brother has his sword, and I have my mind. And a mind needs books like a sword needs a whetstone. There's a set of characters that you also encounter uh, who are across the narrow sea on an entirely different continent. May I present my honored guests, Viserys of House Targaryen, the rightful king of the Andals, and his sister, Daenerys of House Targaryen. He's the man on a mission. He's fairly obsessive about one thing, which is regaining his crown. When they write the history of my reign, sweet sister, they will say it began today. He's very bitter and resentful of the people who took it from him, and he carries a huge burden. His sister is uh, Daenerys Targaryen, also known as Daenerys Stormborn. Tell them to stop. You want the entire horde to stop? For how long? until I command them otherwise. She goes on such a journey. She gets put up with a lot of obstacles coming her way, and every time she overcomes them, she succeeds, and she kind of just gets stronger and stronger as she goes on. She's an incredible, incredible, wicked person. There's plots within plots, and wheels within wheels, and many people competing for one seat. Going into this has always been something very important to us, that things never look fake. For us, it's more about creating this world and making it an authentic and believable world, but it's not our world. We were lucky enough to have the help of a tremendously gifted art department. I'm responsible for the look of the show, from the kind of the floor to the, the sky. I'm working out what the CGI is going to be, the whole look of it from, the, from there downwards, so that we have a complete look to the series. You've got to create a world from scratch that feels like you're in a different time, a different place. So it's creating different environments that work, that feel real, but don't feel like you know, either contemporary or, or known periods. That's the, that's the main thing. The biggest challenges have been, I guess, the scale of the event. We've, we've created very high standards for ourselves. There's a lot of bits to this, and it just has been a lot of stuff to pull together. Gemma Jackson really ranged far and wide to find the artistic resources and the stylistic resources to give us a world we haven't seen before. There's an Arctic wasteland, which is very far north, and you go all the way to a more desert wilderness and everything in between. Our brief was to try to combine interesting visual elements from a lot of different societies and periods. So we spent a lot of time researching medieval Europe. We looked at Oriental influences, we looked at Asian influences, we looked at the subcontinent, we looked at African influences. We tried to find references from a lot of different civilizations in different times and combine them. You try and create a world that's based in real physics, even if it's fantasy, there has to be a reality to it or it will just look like a set. So you're always trying to think, right, how would these people live? What would they need? Why would they put things where they, where they do? How, how would it be? I think the approach we want to take is that, yes, it is fantasy, but it's very grounded in reality. And I think we want to make it as real as possible. And that's the same approach we're taking with absolutely everything. And I think as the series goes on, you'll see the great difference between the four worlds in which the series inhabits. So it's very important that it have a completely different look and that the light be different and the topography. 
we've been given the luxury of, of being able to span various countries. So we scouted probably, I don't know, 14 different countries when we're trying to decide where to shoot and why ultimately we decided to, to shoot Northern Ireland. You drive 25 minutes and you're at some beautiful forest somewhere and you drive 45 minutes and you're at this great old castle. It's a huge scale. Shooting simultaneously in two different countries as Malta and Ireland is a challenge, but it's great fun. We love it. It's one of the fun things about this show is that we get to make it up. We're not queuing to any particular historical period, absolutely. This is a fantasy series, and, and that gives us um, a lot of freedom, and that's part of the fun of it. Fantasy is always bigger. I mean, fantasy is larger and more colorful and more exciting, I think, than history. So you take your inspiration from something in history, you make it much bigger and, and perhaps more dramatic. It's just the best story. It's fascinating, and there's so many twists and turns. And, and when you think you've got it figured, it, it completely it changes its mind. And you follow it, and you get excited by it. There's real emotion, and there's real relationships that you can understand and relate to, and it's just brilliant. It's a wonderful story this interesting combination of a very real world with an overlay of fantasy is a pretty intriguing combination. And I think it's something that you've seen nowhere else on television currently. I don't think anybody will do it quite the way HBO does. What do you know about fear? Fear is for the winter, when the snows fall a hundred feet deep. Fear is for the long night, when the white walkers move through the woods. When the sun hides for years and children are born and live and die all in darkness. That is the time for fear, my lord.